Hello, I'm Anna Raimondi, coming to you from the Angel Cooperative in Ridgefield, Connecticut. Welcome to this episode of Talking to the Dead in Suburbia. Today, our guest is Carol Jakowski. Welcome, Carol. How are you? Thank you. I'm very well today. Carol's life as a nun began in 1964 when she joined the Sisters of the Holy Cross in South Bend, Indiana. She graduated from St. Mary's College in South Bend in 1969 with a BA in Sociology from the University of Notre Dame in 1974 with an MA in Theology. Carol spent half of her life as a nun at St. Mary's College, first as a student and then as an administrator in various capacities. In 1990, she moved to New York City to finish her PhD at New York University. You know, I went there as well. Didn't get a PhD, but I went there. During this time, she also was chief operating officer of the East Village novelty store called Alphabets. In 1995, Carol left the Sisters of the Holy Cross and became part of the Sisters for Christian Community, an independent, self-governing sisterhood. Carol is now a full-time writer and is also the author of Sister Carol's Book of Spells and Blessings and 10 Fun Things to Do Before You Die. And she now resides in New York and I'm so happy to be talking to this fascinating woman. Well, the feeling's mutual. How did you go from being a Catholic nun into the Sisters of Christian Community? And what's the difference? The difference for me was um, in terms of our lifestyle as sisters, you know, I had no problem with living a simple life in the vow of poverty. I had no problem living a solitary life in a vow of celibacy. But the vow of obedience was a problem for me. And that was being able to make my own decisions about what I wanted to do with my life. And for 33 years, it worked for me. I was a sister of the Holy Cross for 33 years. But the turning point for me is when I moved to New York and wanted to focus on becoming a writer. Um, and they did not see that. Uh, they wanted me to work in the church. And I found myself kind of, uh, and I knew the Sisters for Christian Community because many of my friends in Holy Cross had already transferred into that group. I was attracted to that they were self-governing. We make all of our own decisions. Any group decision is made by 100% consensus. It's not a majority of one. We're self-supporting, which in terms of community life, just cuts out a whole layer of pettiness. When you have to support yourself, you live differently. Your, pri you know, your priorities shift. Um, and I like the fact that when I met these women for the first time, we all left for the same reason. You know, we left because we wanted to make our own decisions. We wanted to go where we felt called as sisters, and most of us felt called into works outside the church. And the document which really led us forward and still leads us forward are the documents of Vatican II, you know, which put us back in the world where we belong. Um, and that, that kind of defines our focus. Um, I love meeting with, well, we used to get together once, we're doing Zoom meetings now, which are like a seance. You know, it's like, okay, Eileen, I can see you, but I can't hear you. Mary Jo, we're seeing your mouth move, you know. <laughs> I know. It but, is you know, it's hard to master. Sense of, and we, there are 15 of us in our group, and we live New Jersey, Pennsylvania. We used to get together three times a year for a weekend at a retreat house. Um, but there's always a sense of we're all in touch. Um, I don't, you know, we were talking about that last time. We don't really miss the company of each other because we never feel like we're not with each other. Um, so that, and the first time I met them, first of all, I walked into this meeting, they were all my own age. You know, any convent I lived in, I was the youngest by 25 years. Uh, it, happened when, it was in the 70s when there was the mass exodus of sisters from uh, traditional sisterhood. 
And I think we're seeing a lot more of it now. You know, I, I find, you know, in our community, we have married women with children who are part of our group. Oh, how wonderful. So it's only yeah. women now. It's just one big sisterhood. Yes, yes, yes. Well, women need each other. I mean, I find it even in my practice, like men, they're missing out on so much what we have by connecting, you know, with each other. They don't connect the way yeah. we do. I remember my mother belonged to a group that was called the Share Me's. And it was once a month. And it was all the mothers whose kids went to St. Stanislaus School. They got together one night in each other's houses. They had cocktails, they smoked, they played cards, and no kids were allowed, and the husbands had to leave the house. Isn't that great? I thought, <laughs> it's that so sisterhood. That sisterhood. You know, sisterhood. This, yes. Yeah. That sisterhood. You know, I'm fascinated by your book. Um, you know, I, I think your book is just wonderful. Um, the Sister Carol's Books of Spells and Blessings, the rituals that you talk about in the book that are so a part of all of our lives, you know, um, and how you bring in and um, like different denominations, you know, different religious beliefs. It's very more spiritual than, than anything else. Um, why did you want to put that out for all of us? Well, New York City did that to me. Uh, when I moved here in, uh, I first moved here in 81 to start my PhD at New York at NYU. And I ended up, and you know what New York City's like. Um, my, you know, my landlord was Jewish. He invited me downstairs for Shabbat on Friday nights. Um, I was asking around the neighborhood of where do I go to get candles and incense? And they sent me to Enchantments, which was a witch's store. And I found out that one of the women who was the cashier at the witch's store was the neighbor who lived across the street. So I found myself, people who I knew who had different religious traditions, I became part of their lives and part of what they did. And Which I'm sure was quite different from where you grew up. Oh, totally. All I knew was Catholic. And I went from all I knew that was Catholic, take that up a notch into all I knew was uh, Catholic sisterhood. But once, it was when I moved to New York that I began to see both my spiritual life and what I was called to entirely differently. Um, and I saw, like, for instance, when I, you know, met these witches at the witches store, I'm like, we got our stuff from them. You know, they were there before Christianity was. Um, I loved their sense of ritual. I loved that um, there were some that were in covens. A lot of them were solitary witches, which I perceived myself to be. I found that I had more in common with them than I did maybe even with many of my sisters. So it was kind of opening my eyes sort of to what Mary revealed to you in your conversations. When she said, the earth is our church and we are her priests. And I thought, we have that, we don't need church to tell, we can do whatever church does. We can baptize our children into our own Christian families. We can forgive sins. We can anoint the dying. You know, we can do. So that's what I wanted the book to do was, because I have people all the time, and I'm sure you do too, a request for prayer. Could you do a ritual? And I'm like, yes, of course. But you will do it with me. So that once we do it together, you not only know, and it's much more powerful when you do it yourself because it's your intention. Mm -hmm. It's you. And intentions are big. Yes, they're powerful. And once they do it themselves, I do, I'll do it with them three times and then, they're on, then they get their wings and they're on their own. But I said, and this is something you teach your friends to do. You know, when anybody asks you for prayer, do it with them and then tell them, this is what you can now do for others. So how do you do that? How do you um, lead people through the prayer? Is it individual or do you do something specific? It's both. Uh, it's mostly, okay, say for instance, um, somebody called me her son who is, has a hearing disorder. 
he entered a new school and he was being bullied at school. So I said, well, why don't we think about doing a binding spell? Uh, we'll do it for three full moons. And I said, are there any kids in the school who he thinks are possible friends? And she said, there are two. And I said, okay, for the first full moon, let's work on unbinding those two students from whatever it is to connecting with Josh. And I said, we're just going to focus on that. The second time we'll focus on the rest of the class. And then the third full moon will be a thank you because it will happen. We will get what we ask for. So she, uh, we did the first one. And um, I said, if you can, it's hard with kids, but kids are so powerful. And so oh, yeah, because they're so pure. Especially when it's about them. Mm -hmm. So I said, if there's something you can get him to put on the altar or bring him into it in some way. I said, well, you're going to create you know, altars honey. with people. Yes, yes. And so we did the first full moon. And... On, now they were, her kids are doing, I forget what the virtual in class split is, two days, three days or something. But he goes back to school on Wednesday and those two kids end up playing with him on the playground. Okay, so you've seen miracles through Christ. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I wish everybody could hear that loud and clear. Miracles do happen. You know, it may not be that you're gonna yeah. walk on water, okay? okay but it's bigger than that. You see the transformation of not only yourself, but other people. You know, like I truly believe like the biggest miracle Christ did while, while he was here was to be able to transform people's hearts. Yes. That's the big miracle. And you're seeing that through prayer. Yeah. And Christ says, if you believe that it's already received, you've got it. Well, it's claiming it. It's almost, it's a manifestation. Yes. Yeah. It's an intention. Yeah. It's an, you know, different languages, like different socks for different jocks, like call it what you will, you know, whatever works for you. But the bottom line is the same. You know, yeah. if yeah. you see it, it is. And, you know, there, there's something about intention and manifestation because it carries um, energy. Um, that's, that's pretty wild. That's, that's wonderful. Can you talk to us about like, it's like a lot of people out there, a lot of my listeners may not understand, like, what is it about setting up an altar? What do you put on your altar? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I found usually most houses or apartments I walk into, I can look around and I can tell you where their altar already is. There are photos of grandmothers, great grandparents. There's a candle there. There's a seashell there. Um, I think our instinct, I think you just have to follow your instinct. What's sacred to you? What are your sacred objects? Uh, for me, it's candles are always there. Fire is powerful for me. I'm a double sag. Um, it's like in me. Um, on my altar, I've got shells that I collected in the seashore on the day of our final vows when we were, you know, we all went to the lake together. Um, whatever holds the most intense meaning for you belongs on your altar. Um, and it could be anything. I think everything that's material has power. Mm. I think we can tap into the power. Well, bread, and, you know, if we can turn bread and wine into the body and blood of a divine being, we can turn everything that's material into divine stuff to work for us. Well, it also holds our energy. Yes. And, and energy of generations before us. Some that's why crystals are so cool. Yes, yes. You, yeah. know, um, you know, I tell people, like, if you hold up a clear crystal and those lines in it, those are memory, you know, of, of ancient times coming through yeah. to us. Yeah, and yeah. And the energy of the people that come through, you know. Yeah. Um, you know, and also people that have passed. You know, yes. um, do you also pull in people who have passed into your daily life? Oh, every day, every morning. Um, I mean, I always feel like I have a house full of spirits with me every day. Um, I always call on, um, uh, um, depending on what I'm asking for, I have a whole host of dead sisters that I call on. 
Uh, you feel them around you? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And for me, it's whenever they come to mind, I know they're here because I wouldn't think of them on my own, you know, like. Abs yeah, that's true. You know, I'm like doing something and all of a sudden I'm thinking of Sister Suzanne. And I know she's there because I would not have thought of her at that time. Um, yeah, and that I think is a big takeaway for people. Like it, there's no randomness. You know, things happen for a reason. Uh -huh, there's no uh -huh. coincidence. You know, yeah. like people will say, well, I was thinking about Susie and then she called. Isn't that weird? No, it's yeah. not weird. No, it's not. It's, it's Susie. Connecting with her. It's the same thing with spirits on the other side. Uh -huh. You know, you're not just randomly going through life. Uh -huh. There's a connection that is unbroken. Life does not, you know, end with death. You know, the life goes on and the connection continues. Yeah. And That's particularly wonderful. in, this is one of the things I love about being Catholic is because we were taught from day one to call on spirits for help in prayer. You know, you have a guardian angel at your side, call on St. Anthony to find something. Call on, you know, um, St. Christopher to protect you, you know, call on St. Michael to protect you from fire. So there's kind of an instinct in us um, to call on spirits when we're praying for their help. Um, they're on the other side, you know, they, they can do this for us. Yeah, you know what else I think, look, when I was writing conversations with Mary, one of the things she said to me was not to beg, but to enter prayer in the belief that you're worthy enough to see the miracles come into your life, that, you know, as a child of the universe, as a child of God, that, and you pray with the saints, you pray yes. with the prophets, yes. because yes. they don't answer the prayers, God does, you yes. know, it's entering prayer in confidence, like, I think as a Catholic, I was taught to say, please, God, please, God, please, God, like, <laughs> you know, I'm not worthy, please, God, Bad, the better it would be, <laughs> yeah, um, but the reality is, I am worthy, because if I wasn't worthy, why do I embody this high vibration of love, that is divinity, yeah. And so I am worthy to say, yeah. Now, does that mean all our prayers get answered? Of course not. You know, um, you know, there is the greater good. But no is an answer. No is an answer, right? Yeah. So I, I think that's um, that that's pretty interesting. Um, and so um, you wrote these wonderful books. Are you thinking of writing something else now? You know, I um, have a book that I submitted a proposal for. I also teach writing classes at Bay Path University in Longmeadow, Massachusetts. And one of the classes I teach is spiritual writing through the ages. And I've taught that class for five years and I kept looking, for, I couldn't find the one basic sort of text that I needed for that course. And I was getting at it through the, uh, you know, the writings that I chose. So I decided to write it myself, and it's called Minding Our Muses, Spiritual Exercises for Writers. Oh, that's very good. That's Yeah, nice. yeah. That. And it's just, it's perfect for what I want to do, because what I discovered was the spiritual exercises we learned as young nuns. And for the first three years of my life, we lived with the monastic rule of life, um, contemplation, meditation, silence, not talking for three years. Um, I would never do that. Asian. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, they don't tell you that in the recruitment room. You didn't find that out until day one, you know, when the door was closed. But it, it, it worked. Uh, it works really well in terms of pulling all the readings together. And what I really wanted them, like, are exercises that help you hear your writing voice more clearly, which is the same thing as prayer. You know, prayer is listening. And to be able to listen to the writing voice is like listening to the voice of God in my life. Oh, I think that's wonderful. Can we go back a little bit to witches? Because I think that um, some people hear witches and Wiccan, and there's like this horrible connotation and, you know, um, like the Wicked Witch and the Wizard of Oz or people like doing these weird rituals with, you know, the blood of people. Um, can you give us more of like what you see with the witches and, and what they do and how they connect to the earth, you know? Um, I mean, there's been centuries with the Druids and the, you know, the Celts yeah, and all of those. Yeah, yeah. Can you speak to that a little bit? Sure. 
I see them as another form of sisterhood. Um, that's how I experience them. Um, I think, you know, when we associate them with darkness, it's because they, they know the divine light that exists in darkness. They are not afraid of darkness. They don't associate darkness with evil. They associate darkness with the time that we sit in until light dawns, because it always does. Um, they are wedded to nature. Um, they tap into everything in nature. They tap into the seasons of the year. They tap into darkness and light. Um, and I think it was their ability, you know, and the ability to see light and darkness is what it's part of what we're part of what it means to be human. Mm -hmm. uh, we all know the dark times of our life and what it's like to experience the light side of that. Uh, it's what we're here to learn to do in this lifetime. And I find, you know, that there. I think it's their power that's so fright, or it was frightening to people in the Middle Ages. A because it was women. And these women had power priests did not have. Um, and so that, that was attractive to me. I, I like their sisterhood. I like being part of their sisterhood. I am much more so a part because of the book that I wrote. Um, I like how they welcome me into their community, that they see our sisterhood as part of theirs. Um, so, I, you know, and I think it's, you know, it's 2020. Yeah. You need to look at each other differently and not be so afraid of what's really different from us. Yeah, well, that's the big thing is fear. Yes, yes. Regardless of what it is, we've got to stop being afraid of each other. Yeah, you know, um, but you know, you always hear about the good witches and the bad witches, mm -hmm. you know, um, and, and they probably, and they, and there are both like there are good priests and bad priests. Yeah, yeah. In, yeah. in every people, in everything. It depends on what you use your power for. And you know, most of our holidays are, you know, they coincide with. All of them are. Yeah. You know, we'll look at all of them. All of the Jewish is all of the holidays are clustered around solstices and equinoxes. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, we all celebrate the same whole the darknesses and the lights. You know, it's when light overcomes darkness. Um, yeah. And just totally in tune with that. I yeah, mean, that's our lives. That's what we're yes. all striving for. We're yeah. all going toward the light to get rid of the pain and the darkness and everything else that doesn't serve us. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Or serve God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I find that fascinating. Really, it's fascinating. all the same God. That's the bottom line. Yeah, I, you know what? What the divine power is, it all comes from the same place. Yeah, it's uh, a, yes. and I, I really do hope people, you know, open themselves up and start embracing that without, mm -hmm. you know, judging other people, taking yeah. down the prejudice, and recognizing that we really are one. Yeah. regardless of our spiritual beliefs as long as it's come from a place of love and that's it that's all that really matters you yeah. know there's no special pass that gets us in uh -huh. you know, it's our heart is our past it's what yeah. we've done what we're doing very interesting okay may i say um that there's a woman standing next to you with bakery goods that could be my mother okay does she really like donuts because she has oh my god <laughs> Yeah, I grew up in a bakery. Oh, is this? My father was a baker. My, as a matter of fact, my mother's last food that she ate on this earth was a Krispy Kreme donut. Oh, well, that's what I'm seeing. I'm seeing a donut, but I'm, I'm smelling baked goods and I'm seeing a bakery, okay? Yeah. Um, and she's saying, you live in New York. You live <laughs> in New York. Like, go to the bakery. You don't have to make the stuff. Just go there. You know, um, she's very happy, very happy with yeah. your life and how you've lived it. Because although she was very Catholic, I feel like she had her own beliefs, you know, oh, yeah. she did her own thing. She was a very strong woman. Um, and she's, um, she's with, um, she's with a couple of men. One of them is pretty young. 
Um, my brother David just passed. Oh, she's with him because he looks pretty like he in his 60s. Yes, 63. Yeah. Um, and he's saying it was it was bad. The disease was bad, but he's at peace now. They are all sitting down eating. There's like a platter of donuts in front of them. Yeah. Really yeah. And yeah. He crossed on Halloween. Oh, wow. He had Huntington's disease, which is just devastating to the human body. For three years, he suffered. So oh. we all felt really good when he... when Did he, he just pass? This past Halloween? This past Halloween, yeah. Oh, wow. So he just passed. Did yeah. your mother also pass in October? Yes, she did. Twenty. Yeah. yeah, because I'm hearing, you know, October is a sacred month. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, that's, they're around you and you're doing good work. I'm just, I'm so pleased and happy to have had our paths cross because I truly oh, me too. love your work. Absolutely. You know, I, when I tell people, you know, when uh, I've recommended your book to several people, and I said, you know, when I was going to meet her for the first time, you never know what the person's going to be like. And I said, but when she ordered a Grey Goose Martini, <laughs> double dry and really dirty with five olives, I thought, oh, we were meant to meet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're all human. This is divine intervention <laughs> on my path. <laughs> well, people always think, what do you mean? You're spiritual? and you drink it's like well i'm a human being you know it's a spirit it's a distilled spirit it's a distilled spirit you know it's the way it is well thank you so much for for coming on oh it's I, so great to see you i hope you all enjoyed our episode today if you did enjoy it please share and comment and be sure to subscribe to our channel so you never miss an episode thank you so much god bless let the angels surround you and protect you as you go forward in your lives. Blessed be.